90% of code will be written by AI within six months. At least that's what tech CEOs want you to think. Mark Zuckerberg says AI will code like a mid-level engineer. Salesforce is debating whether they'll even hire engineers in 2025. OpenAI claims AI is already writing half of most companies' code. Probably in 2025, we at Meta are going to have an AI that can effectively be sort of mid-level engineer that can write code. I'm Maddie, and as a senior software engineer who's previously worked at Google and internet companies, including Amazon, Microsoft, and IBM, I've seen firsthand how AI is actually being implemented in big tech. And let me tell you, it's not what the headlines would have you believe. In fact, the engineers who understand how to leverage AI are becoming more valuable, not less. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly what's happening with AI in tech companies right now, and more importantly, the three specific strategies you can take to stay relevant in this new landscape. Let's talk about what's really happening in tech right now. Everyone's focused on AI, but there are two elephants in the room that no one is really discussing. Oversupply of new grads and offshoring. First, remember 2021? TikTok was flooded with day in life videos of tech workers showing off office perks and painting a glamorous life, while news articles advertised massive salaries. As a result, computer science enrollment at many universities literally doubled. Everyone and their mother decided to become a software engineer. As a result, companies aren't cutting jobs only because AI is replacing engineers. They're also adjusting for massive overhiring during the 2020 the 2022 pandemic boom. Look at these numbers. Big tech hired hundreds of thousands of engineers during those two years, more than the previous five years combined. For example, Amazon and Meta both doubled their headcount. Those students who decided to study CS in 2021, they're all now graduating in 2025. We're seeing the highest number of new CS graduates in history hitting the job market at exactly the wrong time. Unfortunately, companies that once were hiring like crazy during the pandemic are now trimming their headcount to adjust to post-pandemic reality and the shift back to regular consumer habits. Here's the bigger reason for the removal of jobs from more traditional US markets, offshoring. Companies are not just conducting layoffs, they're moving entire engineering teams overseas. Big tech companies are aggressively building hubs in India, Eastern Europe, LATEM, and Southeast Asia, where employees are cheaper and sometimes are expected to work much longer hours than their North American dev counterparts. However, I promise it's not all doom and gloom. The tech industry has always moved in boom and bust cycles. During the 2000 dot-com crash, everyone thought tech was dead. Then came the 2008 financial crisis and people said the same thing. The 2017 crypto winter, same story. Each time, the industry not only recovered but also came back stronger, creating entirely new categories of jobs that no one could have predicted. The layoffs were brutal, particularly in 2023, but we saw many fewer layoffs in 2024 and we're even seeing now an increase in tech jobs in 2025 and unemployment at 2.9%, which is significantly below the national average of 4%. And let's be totally real, those AI companies making bold predictions, they're not charity organizations. They're businesses with shareholders who demand growth and VCs who want returns. When the CEO and Anthropic claims AI will write essentially all code by 2026, or when Meta promises AI can replace engineers, Remember, there's a reason behind every headline. Think about it. AI companies have raised billions in venture fundings. Their valuations are through the roof. For example, Anthropic has a $61.5 billion valuation and OpenAI's is $157 billion. To justify these massive valuations, they need to make bigger and bolder promises. When you're valued at billions of dollars, you can't just say, our AI will help developers streamline their workflows and code faster. No, you need to claim that it will replace them entirely. There's a reason why Meta and Salesforce and other companies are making declarations that they will be replacing engineers with AI in 2025, but are still quite aggressively hiring. And obviously, this is a cycle that feeds itself. Companies make bold claims to justify their valuations, the media amplifies these claims for clicks, and investors pour in more money based on the hype. Companies take these claims to be the absolute truth and use it to slash costs with layoffs. And just to be clear, I'm not saying these companies aren't building impressive technology. They absolutely are. I use models like ChatGPT, Claude, and Gemini all the time. But there's a big difference between what is technically possible and what actually works in production at scale and is long-term sustainable without the supervision of an actual human. Being a software engineer is so much more than just coding. In reality, software engineering is about solving complex problems, understanding business needs, and making strategic technical decisions that impact millions of users. It's about understanding trade-offs like performance, cost and user experience in system architectures and applications that can scale sustainably. Let me break down the three key strategies you should follow to not get replaced by AI in this new landscape. 
First off, you need to stop thinking about software engineering as just writing lines of code and rather keep in mind the bigger overall system. This includes knowing how your product's databases, networks, APIs, microservices, and security layers work together to create a robust solution instead of only focusing on writing individual lines of code. For example, let's think about Instagram for a second. When you post a story, you probably don't think twice about it showing up instantly for your millions of followers, right? However, behind this simple feature, there's a massive system working to process and compress your video in real time, distribute it across servers worldwide, handle millions of simultaneous views, keep track of who's seen it, manage all the data without crashing, and log metadata. Instead of only focusing on coding, successful engineers instead also think of system design elements like how do we design systems that can scale globally? What happens when one part of the system fails? How do we keep user data secure across multiple surveys across multiple countries? How do we monitor and debug issues in production? How can we decrease the latency of the API endpoints? Here's why this matters more so than ever. Companies can easily outshore basic coding tasks or use AI to generate simple functions, but designing robust systems that can handle these requirements requires understanding complex trade-offs between cost, performance, and reliability that AI can't handle all on its own. Now let's talk about strategy two, build a strong professional network. As as someone who always gets anxious around strangers, traditional networking events are literally my worst nightmare. I've actually learned that if I don't already know more than 50% of people in a room at a social event, I usually get really anxious. Unfortunately, in 2025, your network isn't just a nice to have, it's literally your career insurance policy. Research shows that around 85% of jobs are filled through referrals. These successful applicants aren't the ones that mass add people on LinkedIn and beg for referrals from absolute strangers. Let me tell you what actually worked for me as an introvert who'd rather stare at my screen than make small talk. Back when I was at Google, I discovered something interesting. My strongest professional connections didn't come from forced networking events. They actually came from my two favorite hobbies, running and board games. During runs, we chat about tech and life, not because we were networking, but because we just wanted to share our experiences. Same thing happened with my board game group. Turns out software engineers really love strategy games and gaslighting their friends in social deception games. These casual conversations led to some of my most valuable professional connections. True networking isn't about collecting LinkedIn connections or awkward coffee chats. It's about finding communities around things you love, building trust through shared experiences, creating connections that feel natural, and honestly just being yourself, just in places where other engineers happen to be. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking, that's, that's great, Maddie, but what if I don't work at Google where there are running and board game groups? Or what if I just don't have the same interests as my colleagues? That's totally fair. Here's what I recommend you do. Find local tech meetups that are activity-based, join Discord communities, run both tech and your hobbies. Start small. Even just one or two consistent connections can grow into a larger network. And if you have the bandwidth, create the community that you want. Start a lunch boarding group at work or a weekend run club. And finally, the third strategy is to use AI as a tool to help you learn. Just four years ago, none of us were using AI coding assistants, but now we have them at our disposal as kind of a 24 seven personal tutor. However, make sure that if you're using AI to write code, don't just ask it to write XYZ. Instead, ask, explain XYZ line by line, Show me three different approaches to solve this. What are the performance implications? What edge cases should I consider? When you debug your code, ask for things like root cause analysis, common pitfalls, best practices to avoid similar issues, and different approaches to debug. For example, if you're studying system design, you can use AI to create a structured learning plan, break down complex architectures, explore different design patterns, understand trade-offs between different approaches, learn from real world case studies, and you can even use AI to quiz you by getting it to generate sample questions, writing down your solution, and seeing the feedback that it gives. If you're stuck, get it to generate explanations in different learning styles. Even for soft skills, AI can help with your tactical communication by simulating code review discussions, giving you examples on how to explain complex concepts simply to non-technical stakeholders, and reviewing your technical writing to improve your documentation ability. While tools like ChatGPT, Gemini, Claude, and other AI agents are very powerful, please keep these guardrails in mind. Don't just copy solutions. Make sure you understand what's going on and prompt the model to explain if you're confused. Don't skip understanding fundamentals. Sure, AI can help you build a complex React app in minutes, but if you don't understand JavaScript basics, you're gonna be stuck debugging issues you just don't understand. Don't rely on AI for critical thinking. AI is a tool, not a replacement for your brain. Always, always fact check AI's answers. Hallucinations can happen. Always double check its responses against documentation, run the code yourself, and verify 
that the explanations make logical sense. And finally, test solutions yourself. Even if your AI will auto-generate test cases for you, still sanity check, break it, modify it, and test edge cases. So in conclusion, if you're watching this in 2025, you're at a crucial point in tech history. AI is changing everything, companies are restructuring, and the industry is evolving faster than ever. But remember, we've been through cycles like this before, and each time, the engineers who adapted came out stronger. That's all I have for this video. If you find this video helpful, hit that like button. If you want more technical deep dives and career strategy talk, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.